Today's uh, topic is called Love Part 2. Last week we did Part 1. Um, I won't be before you long. I have a very busy day today. Um, so I'm going to jump right into it. There is, in, in John, uh, in 1 John 4, 18, there is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear. Because fear has to do with the punishment. The one who fear is not made perfect in love. In Songs of Solomon 8 and 6, it reads, Place me like a seal over your heart, like a seal on your arm, for love is as strong as death. It's jealousy unyielding as the grave. It burns like blazing fire, like a mighty flame. In 1 Thessalonians 3 and 12, that reads, May the Lord make your love increase and overflow for each other and for everyone else, just as our does for you. So what he's praying is that the Lord makes your love overflow. Even though we know how to love now, we can pray for more love. We can pray to love harder. Praise God. In Proverbs 21 and 21, it reads, Whoever pursues righteousness and love finds life prosperity and honor so if you're pursuing righteousness and love you're going to find life you're going to find prosperity you're going to find honor praise the lord for that and first john 4 8 it reads whoever does not love does not know god because god is love so if you ever experience love that means you know god Proverbs 10, 12. Hatred stirs up conflict, but love covers over all wrongs. And if you think back, even though someone that we love may have did something wrong to us or may have did something wrong, period, that doesn't mean we don't love them still, y'all. Praise God. In Romans 8, 38 through 39, 
it reads, For I am convinced that neither death nor life nor angels nor demons nor the present nor the future nor any powers, neither height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. So there's nothing that can separate us from the love of God. Yes, Amen. Amen. And Lamentations 3, 22 through 23. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed. Mm. For his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is faithful to us, y'all. Hallelujah. His love never fails. It says never fails. I'm going to read that again because of the Lord's great love. And this is why, because of his great love, because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. In Mark 12 and 30. That reads, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. Praise the Lord. In other words, it's saying do the best you can. Amen. Amen. Mark 12 and 31. The second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Praise the Lord. In Ephesians 4.15. Instead, speak the truth in love. We will grow to become in every respect and mature body. Him who is the head. That is Christ. So Christ is the head. And we are the body. And we are all spiritually one with Christ. So that means when, when, when God looks at you, he sees his son. He sees Jesus. In Psalms 116, 1, through, 1 and 2, I love the Lord, for he heard my voice. He heard my cry for mercy, because he turned his ears to me. I will call on him as long as I live. Hey Amen. I'm going to read that one again. I love the Lord, for he heard my voice. He heard my cry for mercy. We all been somewhere. I know personally I was locked up and I cried out to him to bring me out of this. You know, nobody wants to do no time. I remember when I was a child and I used to cut up in school and I used to, I knew I had got suspended. So when I come home, you know what I'm saying? I knew I was supposed to got that whooping. You know what I mean? But my mama didn't whoop me. She just sent me to my room or something like that. You know, I took my Sega away or Nintendo away or something like that, you know. But I cried for mercy on my way home to God and my mama didn't give me no whooping. It says, I love the Lord for he heard my voice. He heard my cry for mercy because he turned his ear to me. I will call on him as long as I live. Amen. In 1 Corinthians 13 and 1. That reads, if I speak in the tongues of men or of angels, but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clinging cymbal. Praise the Lord. In Jude 1, 2, mercy, peace, and love be yours in abundance. That's a promise. Praise God. Mercy, peace, and love, it is ours in abundance. Praise the Lord. In 1 Corinthians 10 and 24, that reads, No one should speak their own good, but the good of others. In other words, don't brag and boast about yourself, but brag and boast about other people. Amen. I'm going to read that again. No one should seek their own good, but the good of others. So don't seek your own good, but seek the good of others. Praise the Lord. In 1 Peter 3, 10 through 11, that reads, For whoever would love life and see good days must keep their tongue from evil and their lips from deceitful speech. They must turn from evil and do good. They must speak peace and pursue it. In Psalms 30 and 5, For his anger lasts only a moment, but his favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping may stay for the night, but rejoicing comes in the morning. Praise God. 
In 1 Timothy 4 and 12, that one reads, Don't let anyone look down on you because you are young. Amen. But set an example for the believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. Praise God. So he's saying be an example. Just because you're young doesn't mean uh, people get to look over you or, 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 or try to manipulate you in any kind of way. What God is saying is be a man. Yes, Praise the Lord. Yes, Be a man. Hold your head up high. Hold your square yes, your shoulders back. And I'm going to read that again. That's First Timothy 4.12. It says, don't let anyone look down on you because you are young, but set an example for the believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. Praise the Lord. And in the Bible, it says 80 years will still be considered young. Mm. So if you're under 80 years old, you still consider young. Come on, man. Praise the Lord. In 2 Timothy 1, 7, that reads, For the spirit God gave us does not make us timid, but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. Hallelujah. So when you get the spirit of God, it brings this. It does not bring timidness. It brings uh, uh, power. It brings love and it brings self-discipline. In Matthew 544, but I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Praise the Lord. In Romans 13 and 10, love does no harm. Love does no harm to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. So if you love, you have fulfilled the law. Praise God. So obviously, that's what Jesus came for because we couldn't fulfill the law. We couldn't love mm, until we had God. And see, once we had God, now we have fulfilled the law. I'm going to read that again. Love does not harm to a neighbor. Mm. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. That's Romans 13 and 10. Now, in 1 John 14, this one reads, This is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Praise God. So now we're no longer accountable for our sins because we are in Christ. And once you become in Christ, there's no condemnation in Christ. And since there's no condemnation in Christ, that means the blood has justified you. And since the blood, I should have bullshit shake it. And since the blood has justified you, praise God, that means that you are okay. You are in his good standards. You are in grace. We are no longer under the law because obviously we feel the law because of love, because of God. And he said it will help you prosper. Praise the Lord. Amen. In Romans 8 35, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? Nothing can separate us from the love of Christ. I'm going to read that again. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? Nothing to separate us. No matter what we go through, God. God still loves us. We still have the love of Christ. Praise God. In Psalms 42 and 8. Amen. By day the Lord directs his love. At night his song is with me. A prayer to the God of my life. Amen. In Leviticus 19. 17 through 18, that one reads, Do not hate a fellow Israelite in your heart. Rebuke your neighbor frankly, so you will not share in their guilt. Do not seek revenge or bear a grudge against anyone among your people. But love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. Amen. I'm going to read a few more. Amen. Amen. In, in Psalms 103 and 8, that one reads, The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. Amen. And that's why most of us are still alive today. I'm going to read that again. The Lord is compassionate. Oh, that means he'll feel sorry for you. <laughs> he knows this world is hard. And gracious. Amen. Slow to anger. That means even though we do mess up, he is slow to anger. Why? Because he loves you. And it says he is 
is abounding in love. Uh, even though my children might mess up, y'all, I still love them. <laughs> they can go to the store and get caught for stealing. I'll go burn them out, but I still love them. Hi, man. Shout out to Bullshit. So even though we go do something and, and, and we get caught in sin, that's okay. There's no condemnation. God still loves us. Praise God. And in 1 Corinthians 13 and 3, that reads, If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship, that I may boast. But do not have love, I gain nothing. So you can be as rich as you want to be, but if you don't have love, you have gained nothing. And I don't know, but I want a lot. I want what God has for me. I want to gain everything I need to get. There's a pandemic going on. Uh, 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 jobs are not paying that good. So I need God to give me the missing pieces amen we need those missing pieces praise the lord in galatians 5 22 through 23 it reads but the fruit of the spirit is love joy peace forbearance kindness goodness faithfulness gentleness and self-control against such things there is no law why because we feel the law because of love because of god's love we have filled the law Praise God. Amen. This is the last one, y'all. 1 Timothy 6 and 11. But you, man of God, flee from all this and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, and gentleness. So if we pursue these things, we're going to have an abundant life. We're going to have love in our life. We're going to have power in our life. We're going to have protection in our life. We're going to have the things that, that, that causes us to receive more from God to get gain. Heavenly Father, I come to you right now in the name of Jesus, and I ask you to touch each and every one of my brothers and sisters in this building, Lord. Uh, let them know that you are thinking about them and you are not upset with them, Lord. Uh, let us know that you love us, Lord, and you will help us prosper, Lord. Father, again, touch each and every one of us in this building and let it be a blessing for money. Let it be a blessing to overflow in our pockets, Lord. You said, I will open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing so much you won't be able to receive it all. Well, Father, do just that for each and every one of us in here. Again, Father, touch us, Lord. Let us know it has been done. I call it done. In the name of Jesus, amen. Did you know that the majority of people have no will, trust, or power of attorney? What will happen to your children, property, or other assets? If you can't make decisions for yourself, who will know your wishes? Will the appropriate people know where to find all of your personal and financial documentations and information? Well. We have a program developed by attorneys to complete at your own pace from the comfort of your home. You can update this program as needed with no add-ons or surprise fees. You can secure all of your important information in this virtual password protected safety deposit box with easy to use services and client support system available. Please call me today at 706-366-5520. Again, call me today at 706-366-5520. I hope to hear from you soon.